Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we have a definitely big Unity themed video today, because the big news obviously is Unity 6.1 was just released. We'll go into what is new in that release, there's a couple exciting new features, we will check them out in just a second. But in related news, there are a couple of bundles and a free ebook available as well. So we're going to go through all that quickly first. Uh, the first one we've got is a pair of them up on Gumroad. The first one here is the Space Nova Unity bundle. This is 15 plus environment packs from Lurtes Studio, as you can see all of them available here. Uh, they recently had a similar thing called Supernova or something. This is completely different assets, by the way. You're going to notice the pricing here shows as 100 bucks. Use the code SN70, and that drops that down to $30. So you're getting a number of different asset environment packs uh, from Lortez for uh, 30 bucks. Or you have this other bundle, the Star Nova. This is 5 plus, which again, you're getting some coupons in here as well, but five different environment assets. And you use the code SN40 here, and this one drops this down to just 10 bucks USD. So if you're looking to pick up some environments, uh, a good set of bundles going on over there. Uh, they are their studio license, which is good for people up to, I think it's 10 developers. I would look into that specifically, but oh, 11. So you see right here, uh, if you're bigger than that, you're going to want to stay away from this. But I think for most people, it's a good deal. By the way, they also have a pack going on for the Godot engine and two for the Unreal game engine as well. So if you want to go ahead and check that one out, uh, my links will be down below. And if you do use my link, it does support me. So thank you very much there. The other thing here is we just had Unity release this free ebook which is all about using the UI toolkit in Unity 6. But I'm going to assume it still applies equally well to Unity 6.1 since it was released literally yesterday. Unity 6.1 was released today. Uh, but this is the new Uni, uh, UI layer uh, that was used in the Dragon Crashers example, which is also available, by the way. You can notice here, it is a PDF book. Uh, you can download it directly. You don't need to use this integrated viewer to see it. But you see here, uh, 148 pages on how to use this guy. So if you want to check out their new UI toolkit, uh, Unity just published this brand new uh, PDF documentation or book on how to actually use the UI toolkit. Uh, so that will be available in the links down below as well. And then finally, I actually kind of covered this, but there were like three or four game dev humble bundles all released like pretty much the same weekend. So it kind of pushed it into another one, but they launched the Supreme Unreal and Unity game dev bundle. I will have a link for this down below as well. What you'll notice when you take a look at it, is you've got um, uh, half basically is Unreal, half is Unity. So you can see the number of Unity. These are all available with the professional licenses, by the way. You're going to notice it is uh, from Before Studios and then Ragnarok, Ragtorok. Uh, so uh, the, those that bundle is available as well. So if you're looking at picking up a number of assets for Unity, oh, well, you're spoiled for choice right now. So again, all those links are down below. And if you do use my link, it does help support me. And thank you so very much if you do. All right, so we got a quick overview of what is in Unity 6.1. Uh, this is a pre-release version of the release notes. I'm just going to look at a very small subsection of it. This is a, a standard release. So basically, one of the things about the Unity 6.1 lot uh, releases is that they're going to be all about stability. So they're testing them out to make sure that when you go 6.1, you can go to 6.2, 6.2 can go to 6.3, and so on. I believe it's 6.3 that is going to be the LTS version. We'll get back to that in just a sec. First, I figured I would show you some hands-on with some of the more exciting new features. Now, the first one we've got here, and I'll show you where you can get this project yourself. This is variable rate shading. Now, this isn't overwhelmingly exciting of a demo, and whoever did this really likes their God rays and bloom, but there's a reason for that. Because what what this is doing is actually uh, the shader uh, that is being used here is by the what the name says variable rate uh, rendering different amounts based off of different factors in this particular case it's based off of the speed and I'll show you exactly what I mean by turning on the debugger so here we go we're down to uh, basically nothing we'll turn the variable rate shading debugging on and you'll see it's not really doing anything but as we speed up you're gonna see it kicks in. So what it's doing is those areas that are actually not sure exactly what this debugger is showing is the red being variable rate or the green being variable rate. But as we go faster, uh, because of the blur and so on, you don't need as much detail. So the variable rate shader kicks in and then you've got faster uh, GPU performance as a result. So this is one of the newest features here, uh, kind of a headline feature. Now, one of the things I want you to notice about this is almost all of the marquee stuff we're talking about today is for the universal render pipeline. Uh, and I don't know why that just happened. Uh, but yeah, so that is definitely a noticeable trend here. And another thing I want you to notice with the trajectory of Unity, the next version of Unity, unnamed, but I'll call it Unity 7, it's going to be a game 
game-breaking. It's going to be a game-changing, but it's going to be game-breaking because they're going to be doing things like merging the pipelines back together, and it surely seems like the Universal Render Pipeline 1 and HDRP stuff is going to be merged into it. So what you're going to notice, first, there's two things to, to realize there. First off, Unity 6.x is going to be around for a very long time, several years. I imagine they will be adding new features to Unity 6. Branch for um, years after Unity 7 is released because Unity 7 is going to break a lot of stuff. So, one of those things to be aware of. So, this is one of the changes. Another one we've got is there is the addition of forward plus rendering, again, in the Universal Render Pipeline. We'll get back to that one in just a second. And then, one other thing to showcase, and this is actually added via a um, it's an extension, a, a package, uh, but I've already added it. It is the new project auditor, and I ran it. But basically, you come on in here, you say, okay, so we'll start again. So you first load up the project auditor. It goes, okay, I can analyze your project. This is a static analysis. Basically, it runs through your project, and it locates any problems it can find. This is both going through your source code as well as your assets, and it's going to give you... Um, uh, analysis on things that you can do to optimize your project. So very nice in that regard. We'll let this run. It is relatively quick. This is so uh, this is a standard from them for showcasing their variable rate shader, not my code or anything. So we'll see what it finds with their thing. Now, again, this is static analysis. There's nothing to say that it's going to be flawless for this results. But here you can see breakdown. There is one major, four moderate, and 24 minor code issues. Uh, we've got assets. We've got 17 moderate code issues. Project settings, we've got 10 there. And then for each one of these, it's got a breakdown. So we can see the breakdowns for the individual things. So just like the code performance, I'll go to that in just a second. And then here we got the top 10 issues. So here it's got, there's an empty mono behavior uh, issue there uh, three times. You can drill down into them. You can get more details like so. So here we are in the code section. And you, again, you can go to the asset section here, see what it found there. So the issues that are available there, and you can jump through them accordingly. So here you can go. This has uh, an empty start behavior. You should, why that's an issue, some details about it and so on. And then you can say, okay, ignore this and go on. So it basically it is a code profiler, asset profiler, and project settings profiler. Uh, and it's a, it's a great new addition, I think. Now, I don't know how good the actual suggestions it gives are, uh, but those are probably the three most major marquee new features. So again, back to these preview release notes. Uh, so these might change slightly from the, the Unity blog, if that's the case. So if yours look a little bit different, that's why. But here, what you're going to see, the big new ones here, Unity 6.1, major performance upgrades. But again, this one is ERP only. Uh, so variable shading rate is ERP and HDRP, uh, which is nice, although that demo, I believe, is ERP only. Uh, but Deferred Plus is, uh, I, I'll get to the details of Deferred Plus in the future, but basically it is um, sort of like how you have um, Forward and then Forward Plus. You have Deferred and then Deferred Plus. It, it gives you a couple of extra special abilities, but mostly it comes around to how lights are handled. It also gives support for working with the GPU resident drawer, uh, which is kind of a... Um, uh, how would you describe that? I suppose it's an occlusion culling technology. It's, it's basically a freebie way of we only draw things that you'll be able to see. Another performance optimization that was added in Unity 6. So those are the two big new ones. We got some more details on both of those coming up. On top of that, we have uh, some changes here. So the project auditor for the static analysis, we saw that quickly in action there. Uh, also uh, build automation, uh, atom Auto automation. Yeah, I can't speak today. Uh, moving on from there, because I don't want to speak anymore. Uh, we also have here, uh, so support for large screens and foldables, uh, which I am on team foldable, so I do like to see this there. Uh, improvement for the uh, Unity for web, so run your Unity games anywhere the web exists, including mobile browsers, experiment the latest web GPU graphics, API integration, and a lock compute acceleration for web browsers. So web GPU support is finally here for web developers using Unity. Uh, improvements to Android XR and MetaQuest support, instant games, Facebook Messenger support as well, and then improvements for PC and consoles, including uh, improved CPU performance, PSO caching, ray tracing with enhanced DirectX 12 support, and so on. And again, I think I mentioned this earlier on in this take anyway, Ways. They are focusing more on the upgradability between releases, so it should be easier to go from 6.1 to 6.2 to 6.3 and so on. This is something that people were stuck on ancient versions of Unity forever because they always broke all this stuff going forward. Now they're actually testing it and they're testing it in the real world on real projects. So they're dogfooding finally, like what we've seen with Unreal Engine for years. Unity have started doing that. In fact, they launched this project earlier on. I did a video about this specifically a couple weeks ago. Um, but they've got Survival Kids, which Unity developed entirely. They published it through Konami. 
Uh, but this is a Switch 2 launch game, so they're going to be dogfooding their own project, their own platforms, their own things, but they're also upgrading to the newest version of Unity as they go through it. So that means that you should be able to go through the process rather painlessly. So uh, you should be able to use these versions a little bit easier than you used to in the past. They're also working with several other developers where they're acting as co-developers, and they're working on making, again, the upgrade ability between versions so you can actually use the damn things, which is a nice step. Uh, so a little bit more detail about a couple of things we talked about. So we've got the um, variable rate shading. I will have this link down below. So you want to learn a oh, little linked in the linked article anyways. Uh, this describes exactly how variable rate shading works. The one that we've got here was based off of velocity. Uh, so basically they, they render less as you go faster, should be um, like as your object literally goes faster. There are other options in here as well. So you do variable rate shading like this generation here, which uses edge detection and so on. But basically variable rate shading is a way of... Um, taking resources off the shader if they don't need to draw more detail the variable rate shader can handle and do less work and then perform better uh, the other thing we got here again is the new forward plus rendering path and the forward plus the big thing there is similar to forward rendering path but there is no limit to the number of lights that can affect each game object there's still limit on the number of lights visible per camera however using forward plus rendering path reduces the number of lights unity calculates for each game object unity divides the screen into tiles then it identifies which lights affect each tile. Uh, when Unity calculates the lighting for a game object, it uses only lights that affect the, um, the tile the game object is in. So that is the new forward plus rendering in there as well. If you want to learn more about these, the shading uh, rate demo is available. Uh, hasn't been updated in a little bit. Now, one of the things you're going to want to know about it, uh, I go back to my hands-on demonstration here. If you check this one out, first off, the uh, settings are for it, available in Assets Settings Renderer. That's where you will be able to turn this on and off. Another thing that was interesting, at least the way that mine launched, is it was as low resolution aspect out of the, the box, and then that makes this render really weird. So you'll notice when you go ahead and run it, it doesn't, because it's, it's zooming past, you're barely seeing anything. Uh, so I had to change that down here, turn that one off, and then you can have like a lower scale and you can actually see it rendered properly. So uh, if you want to enable this uh, viewport over here, again, come into assets, settings, and then uh, renderer settings, and it's available right there, debug VRS. So if you want to go ahead and check off the VRS demo, it is available here. There is more documentation on exactly how variable rate shading works if you want to learn more about it. That is all available there as well. Uh, and then the other one here is the project auditor. We showed you this is the static analysis tool that was added in 6.2, oh, 6.1, sorry. This is added as a package. Uh, the easiest way to add it is just go on into here. You're going to want that guy right there. So then you can come back over here, go over to window uh, go into they moved everything around now it's a little confusing to me here package package manager click add install by name paste that in so com.unity.project-auditor uh, and then install that and then it will be available for you once again the tool is available under analysis right here and then project auditor so ladies and gentlemen that is it that is unity 6.1 and again a quick reminder if you are a unity developer or just if you're a developer in general we have these um two bundles going on over here for unity developers but there's also two unreal engine ones and a good developer as well same codes so if you get this one it's sn70 and it knocks it down to like 30 bucks or 40 bucks whatever the math is uh it knocks 70 dollars off or this one sn40 knocks 40 dollars off turns this into a 10 dollar bundle a hell of a deal and again if you use my links it does support me uh we do have this new New book available as well uh, so you can download the pdf directly from them 150 page pdf on using the unity toolkit ui toolkit in unity 6 and then finally we do have this humble bundle available as well about 50 50 between unity and unreal engine so there is a huge amount of assets available on top of that so if you want to go ahead and check out unity 6.1 and you want something to play with hey we got you covered there so let me know what you think of unity 6.1 of the i guess the 6.1 versus 6 or the 7 development path going on uh, and the fact that they're actually dog fooding their products now let me know what you think of all those things comments down below i will talk to you all later goodbye